honey, eat your bug Pokemon so you can grow up big and strong like me. But mom, I'm a male Salandit. I can't evolve. Well then give your leftovers to your sister. Feed me. Salanda and Salazel have what I'm gonna call evolutionary sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism in the real natural world is the physical difference between male and female animals. Think of male deer growing antlers or male peacocks having big extravagant tails. These differences exist because they aid in mate attraction, competing for mates, or in reproduction. Antlered male deer can fight for females and male peacocks can show off how healthy and beautiful they are to attract mates. Male and female Solandid are sexually dimorphic, but only in their evolution, since females are the only ones that can evolve into Salazzle. The Pokedex states that only females can evolve because the male Solandid give their food to females and are therefore malnourished. Food sharing and reproduction have close ties in the real natural world, with many males providing females with nuptial gifts in order to impress them and convince them they should reproduce. This is most common in birds, insects, and spiders. We also get a glimpse into their reproductive strategies thanks to Pokedex entries, and we know that Salazzle create reverse harems of males. This kind of mating strategy is called polyandry, literally meaning many males. This can be observed in many insects, most famously the eusocial honeybee, some marmosets, tortoises, and about 1% of all bird species, like the jacana of Central and South America. Female jacana will mate with multiple different males in one season, laying multiple clutches of eggs. After it lays its eggs, it will leave them with the father as their sole caretaker, which is where we get these eldritch horror birdmare nightmare images from. It's just males carrying around their offspring because their deadbeat mother isn't around and instead laying more eggs with other males. This strategy increases the genetic diversity and fitness for the female's offspring and is a way to hedge her bets and not put all of her jacana eggs in one male's basket. This is very similar to what Salazzle appears to be doing. Like jacanas, Salazzle will establish territories filled with males to mate with. We even know that Salazzle will compete with other neighboring Salazzle, possibly using the males under their control to fight for them. Maybe the winner gains more males to mate with or access to more resources. Obviously, this is going to be exhausting for the female, which is where the nuptial gifts come in. The Salazzle is spending so much time laying clutches of eggs that she doesn't have much time to hunt. Thankfully, she has an army of physical touch starved Salanda DoorDash workers at her disposal that are desperate for her attention. This Salazzle on Salazzle combat may also explain why female Salanda even evolve in the first place. They need to be large and strong to compete for and collect mates. Higher base stats resulting from evolution would make them more competitive and give them an advantage in intraspecific combat and controlling territories. Polyandry is a rare reproductive strategy and researchers have hypothesized that systems like this evolve when animals and Pokemon experience extraordinarily high rates of egg loss. In the Jacana's instance, it can be things like snakes and caimans, and with Salazzle, it might be Pokemon like Rattata, Young Goose, Crab Roller, or maybe even environmental conditions, since Salazzle appears to prefer hot, dry, and volcanic regions. If lava could erupt at any given moment, I would want to have a lot of eggs in different places too. However, two of the proposed nest predators are introduced to Salandit's home region of Alola. Both Alolan Rattata and Young Goose were brought to the islands by people, so Salanda and Salazzle did not evolve alongside these Pokemon, assuming that Salazzle is originally native to Alola. Instead, they have simply adjusted to their presence. This also makes me wonder, what is the purpose of Salanda and Salazzle's signature ability, Corrosion? If this Pokemon is feeding on bug types and insects and defending itself from dark and normal types, it wouldn't need the ability to poison Pokemon that are normally immune to poison. That's why I believe the introduction of Rattata and Young Goose to Alola have resulted in the extirpation of an Alolan Pokemon that evolved to prey on the nest of Salanda and other nearby Pokemon. And that mystery nest predator is the frying Pokemon Pochim. This steel ground type uses its iron-plated bill to fight off Salandit before plucking eggs from their nest and frying them up in its mandible over thermal vents or lava flows. Since Salazzle doesn't take any part in raising young and often has multiple nests active at one time, it's easy for a Pochim to attack a nest defended only by one singular Salandit. Thanks to Pochim's heatproof ability, it's able to endure Salandit's fire-type attacks in order to grab a meal. Heatproof Pochim have been hypothesized as the reason that Salanda and Salazzle evolved the ability Corrosion. 
their fire type attacks are weakened against this predator, therefore poison type attacks that were able to get past the steel typing of Pochin were more advantageous and experienced strong selection pressure. Slandits that had the ability Corrosion and new moves like Poison Gas or Toxic were more successful at defending their nests and therefore raised more offspring, which led to more Slandits with the ability Corrosion. Conversely, Salandit, with their other ability Oblivious, had no idea that their nests were being raided so often, so the numbers of individuals with that ability dwindled, which is why it's a hidden ability. It's hidden because they're all dead. Salazzle competing with other Salazzle for resources or mates might have also led to the evolution of Corrosion, as it allows them to poison poison types. Pochin live in burrows in hot climates and in sandy and rocky substrate. They can use their bill as a shovel to excavate holes, or gain access to salandit nests that might be hidden in rocky crevices. Its small body allows it to navigate tunnels and caves, but its large bill often restricts its ability to turn around, leaving it vulnerable to other burrowing predators like young goose and gumshoes. Its body size has also placed limitations on its reproduction. Much like other small, round, flightless birds, Pochum only lays one egg at a time. This leaves their populations vulnerable to nest predators that are able to navigate its tunnels like Alolan Rattata. These introduced predators have completely eliminated poaching populations in Alola, but thanks to captive breeding programs like the ones at Unova's Blueberry Academy, Pochum has been saved from extinction. Now, nest attending Salandit might have a greater variety of predators to worry about, but both of their typings can lead to powerful anti-predator attacks that would normally not deter a hungry Pochum. We now know that Data and other Pokemon researchers suggest Salazzle evolved polyandry due to high rates of nest predation. And this mating strategy allows them to increase their genetic diversity and to diversify their offspring portfolio in case one nest gets hit by predation. And that the specialized nest predator Pochim or female on female combat has led to the evolution of their special ability Corrosion, which allows them to threaten attacking steel or poison type Pokemon. If you like videos like this on theoretical Pokemon evolution or you want to see more of my fake money, you can check out this video looking at the diet of fire types. Or if you want something a little bit more narrowly focused, you can watch this video looking at Quackleball's feet. I promise it's not weird.